Anxiety, the Positive Perspective Podcast. This podcast provides greater understanding and awareness for those challenged by anxiety and for the people that love them. Well-known authors Michelle LaFord and Jennifer Thompson bring it to the table with truth and vitality. Now, too. I'm yeah, going to record so now. It's both recorded. <laughs> You're funny. You are so much fun. I don't, I don't believe you had the dots. I don't believe it. It's too much fun. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Anxiety, the Positive Perspective with Jennifer Thompson and myself, Michelle Afford. And I want to spoil my shirt here. Hashtag, I'm not nervous. Um, <laughs> She's not. <laughs> we made this as a joke. Um, my daughter, I, I have like every color, white, black, gray, burgundy. I have hoodies that say it. And we decided we were going to brand this, I'm not nervous. Hashtag, I'm not nervous. Because... When people ask me, are you nervous? I'm like, oh my God, I'm not, I passed nervous long ago. <laughs> long ago. And now I say sometimes, oh, I'm nervous. And so instead of panicky, now I get nervous. So it's, it's, it's funny. So my daughter said, hashtag, I'm not nervous. But yeah. So we wanted to, to bring into the third podcast. This is episode three. We wanted to to bring in the four base emotions that we had talked about a little bit. Exactly. And yeah, let's touch base because I really think that with anxiety, we lose touch with our emotions and we become very focused on negativity, on toxic mm -hmm. emotions. And so as we move through recovery in the anxiety realm, we want to talk about balancing out affection, attention, acceptance, an accomplishment right. so, um, and where yeah. we can get those from if we're not like we were talking in the previous one if we are not in a relate like you're saying you know if you're not in a relationship where do you get some of those from right 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 yeah. and how they are so integral to um, I don't want to say happiness because I believe that the word happiness is misleading yes uh, content content yeah. peaceful at peace uh for me yeah. after anxiety the word peace means a lot to me uh, <laughs> yeah. a and lot think, to me and i think michelle if you have those in place it it's it, it's a foundational to thriving you yes. know thriving and i think right. even if you don't i don't you know you say sometimes some of those things might be lacking in your life i can't i cannot help but see that you are at, indeed actually thriving yeah, oh yeah absolutely yeah. so uh, that, yeah and we'll want to do that where, yeah from where i used to be total survival mode and people with anxiety disorders they tend to just survive and now uh, again, when I have a destination or I have a goal, I want to enjoy the journey. There are good mm -hmm. pieces to it. So I want to butterfly net that positive perspective. Perfect. Yeah. Let's right. do the four. Uh, let's get into the four emotions. Yeah. Okay. Let's well, go. why don't you take this one? Because this isn't really so much centered in anxiety. Why don't we, why don't we roll with you for a minute? I love your perspective. Um, so let's talk about those. Affection and attention, I think, kind of go hand in hand to a certain extent. Right. And I think uh, for, for me, uh, I, I've, I really believe every time I look outside myself to look for the locus of control outside myself, then I lose some of myself. I don't want to do that. So within myself, situation, circumstances are never, they, you know, circumstances might not be what you want them to be at the moment but ultimately i think we are in charge we are responsible for our own sense of well-being so that's that's a perspective i take um so let me ask you let me ask you this sure i agree with that but i think that it's a balance i really think that it has to come from other places as well yes so so let me elaborate elaborate so the fund the foundation is i've got to look and see what i'm doing for myself first to achieve some of those goals right mm. and so i think we were made we were made for community i don't believe you know so i think that's part of our dna is to to have that i think int i mean intimacy is one of my core 
core values. It's one of my I top do. five core values. Yeah. And I love it. I think we become, uh, but to, ex so what, so let me differentiate between looking, not looking outside for needs met versus what I'm thinking about um, looking outside where to thrive. So there's some things we can do for ourselves, I really believe. And so I'm not making someone responsible for my happiness. There you go. Yeah. But I'm recognizing that they put, they add some joy. There you <laughs> go. Yeah, it's that balance. Yeah. So, so okay. Not, so, not being, not making, like what you said, Michelle, you're not making someone in the previous podcast, you're not making someone responsible whether you have anxiety or not. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's hard because it's easy to do that. It's easy to get your joy elsewhere. Yeah. Um, I think it's harder to look at it from an internalized perspective. So, you know, when I look at these four base emotions, accomplishment, that can only come from you. And you could be team centered, but you still have to be a piece of that team. Yes. Um, an accomplishment, you and I being writers, um, I've collaborated before. I'm not nearly as proud, if you want to use the word, of a collaborative effect as I am something that I did do on my own. Yes. Um, and so the accomplishment realm, I just have to say, I, it's foreign to me to not be accomplished because I'm a goal-driven person. So am I. And yeah, I think so. there's something to be said about feeling like, oh, that's a job well done and I did it. I mean, I think we're that like, yeah, we yeah. made to feel like that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's Definitely. only when it goes, when it becomes our major focus, that's the problem, right? I mean, right. anything that becomes just, that's all you focus about. So that I agree with you. Yeah. Well, and and it's then, like this, like as a writer, some, somebody will tell you, oh, your book came out, you know, publishing that, that was just such a, a great accomplishment. And then you'll see the people will be like, oh yeah, so you, you wrote a book. Yeah, and it didn't take a day. <laughs> did not take a day. I know. Right. Well, actually, I did write a book about three weeks ago. I wrote a book in a day. It has one page, and it says, fuck excuses, just do it. That's my book. And it literally talks about the fact that you can find an excuse for anything you don't want to accomplish. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's the whole book, one page. And I say in the book, and this isn't any longer than this because this is the reality of it, you know? either get rid of the excuses or use them because you can write the book of excuses if you don't want to do something. The, the yeah, choice yeah. is, do you want to do it or not? So yeah, yes. accomplishment, that's on you. And I think it's just recognizing you don't have to write a book or get a degree or take care of 271 kids or put a new foster care system in the state or, you know, talk to people about wealth management or where do you live? You live half of the year in the Mediterranean and half of the half year, the year it's in, in California. <laughs> I, I dreamed about it a year ago and I made it happen. That's I dreamed about it a year and a half ago and I made it happen. That's what it takes. Make it happen. Set yeah. the steps down, make them doable and do them. Fuck the excuses. Michelle, I want to get back to the idea of accomplishment, Han. I really love that. I, I, again, you know, it's interesting when it comes to accomplishment, it doesn't matter what anyone says. Like someone could tell you, oh my God, that book was amazing. But if you did not feel like it was, mm -hmm. again, it's about how you, it's again, it's within ourselves, right? Right. So could, oh my God, that book was amazing. I mean, I've met people and they were like really smart and they did a lot, but they never felt like it was enough. So it's about right. how you feel. So again, what is your sense of accomplishment? And I, the other thing I really like is I, I think innate in us as well, really innate in us, is that it doesn't matter what you've accomplished if you don't have fulfillment. That's true, right? And see, like, okay, so think about this. Do you feel accomplished because you wrote those books? No. <laughs> Me neither. But you know no, what? I, don't, I had fun. No. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't no. like... You know, if I wrote your 23 books, I'd feel accomplished. <laughs> but if I wrote one of yours, I would feel accomplished. <laughs> but you know what, Michelle? But I think what I, I, it's really interesting when I look back at parts of my life that brought me a sense of fulfillment. Uh, the best, some of the best things was when I was serving at a soup kitchen. I was yeah. helping out every morning 
in my suit on my way to work, walking to work, I would yeah. stop by and serve these 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 drug addicts in this soup kitchen in, in Victoria. And everything I could have done in life did not, it, and I didn't feel accomplished doing that, but nothing in life I could have done gave me the fulfillment I felt when I yeah. did that. So, okay, so when we talk about accomplishment, we really redefine accomplishment as to what we feel fulfilled by yes. accomplishing. Yes. And like me, this recovery, this recovery for me is by far my biggest accomplishment because it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Right. Everything else. I mean, I had to choose that I wanted to do this. I had to choose to live alone, which I don't like living alone. I like people. Um, I had to choose today to take the frame of mind of if my friend gets to come and visit today, that's great. And if not, it'll be tomorrow. You know, and I had to grit my teeth through that. It's okay. We'll have a lot of weekends to spend together. <laughs> so, I want this one. Uh, so, you know, I choose the choices that I make, make me feel accomplished right now. They make me feel fulfilled. Yes. That I'm not angry all the time. Cause I do have bouts of anger with the fact that my support system, my people that I counted on are nowhere to be found. They're busy. You know, and I resent that to a degree. And then I remember because I want to steer my thoughts from that negative thought of resentment to they deserve to have their lives. They're not obligated to take care of me just because they love me doesn't mean they're responsible for me. There you go again. You're looking. That's my big belief is that, you know, when you start looking at the solutions within yourself, you realize how much power you have. Absolutely. It doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't because I've yeah. gotten a text here from my daughter. She got a job. Yay! <laughs> this is an accomplishment. When you talk about accomplishments, this is someone who, and I don't, you know, I try not to share too much about like my kids, but yes. my daughter's bipolar, and we struggle with that because ninety percent of her time she does amazing but she'll have two to three days where she can destroy her entire life and mine and anybody around hers by making wow. impulse decisions and then be so torn up about it. And it's been very, very different. I've always said this last year, I've said, I'm going to become a bipolar advocate. I don't know how, you know, I'm learning more about it. I try and utilize the master plan as much as I can, but it's different. It really is different. Right. And so she, she just texted me and she had tried to call a little while ago and you know, I'm, I have to say the words, are you okay? And then it came, I'm okay. I work at such and such and a yellow heart. And I'm like, my oh. heart fills joy. And right. absolutely because she will struggle at times to get to it, but we have a backup plan and we have the authority with each other to say, do the best you can do today. Do the best you can do today. And so we don't need to worry if you're going to get there tomorrow or the next day, but do the best that you can do today. Now, am I empowering her or am I enabling her? It's always been a question that I have. Am I empowering or enabling? And when you talk about accomplishment, you talk about a lot of times people don't feel accomplished because they had support. Does that make sense? I I, I, yeah. You said something in the last episode about men will take credit for everything that they do, but the women will say who it's all helped them get there. Right. You know, yeah. It's amazing. Like you tell, I, I told this woman, my God, you're an editor of a sci uh, the, the uh, top science magazine. Mm -hmm. And this is great. She said, well, you know, like I did get this and this, I do get help. And I'm thinking you asked the guy, I said, yeah, yeah, I am. And what's your problem? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I knew that. Didn't you? Well, we, yeah. We've been so you, women, yeah, they do. We, they really look the at best, the best part, Michelle, I'm, uh, as I, as I hear closely to, to what's going on around me, is a whole idea of what is success, what is accomplishment is changing. That's what I believe. Absolutely. I think collaborating, getting along, uh, coaching, caring, empowering is now leadership. <laughs> Not, okay, 
Hey baby, yeah. I'm the boss now. Everybody, listen to me. It's right. Tricky. It's big, and I'm quite. It's quite nice. Yeah. See? Do you want to work for that person? Like, do you want to work for or with the person that wants to dictate everything that you do? I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I and want to work on the team. You know, yeah. I think we're we're centralizing more of a team effort. Yeah. And so you know, and we're talking about that, but then we go back to, you know, they say there's no I in team. I do not agree with that. I've always said there's an I in team. There's you and me and you <laughs> are the I. And if you don't take care of you and you don't fulfill your responsibilities in my team, carry my team weight. Crumbles. everybody has to carry their weight. Yeah. And so there is an I in my team, you know, yeah. I have to be, uh, self-sufficient. And team, I love that you brought up team because I used to coach on the college level and that was quite an accomplishment, not the coaching part, but that I had to go to tournaments and to games and it was on the college level. So they're never in the same city and I would ride a bus or drive a van. And that was the biggest challenge of that was that driving has been hard for me. So here I am, you know, and, he, and, and there was a thing I always had Eminem sitting up on the um, console. And I would have a cup of M&M's. I didn't eat them. I'm allergic to chocolate. But right. you did not behave on my van. I would grab that whole cup and I would fling it backwards and it would sound like bullets. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and I would, that was the signal, the signal to shut it. Shut it. Stop. Shut it. You know, so, and then they got to eat the M&M's off the floor. But um, <laughs> when you talk about a team. Yeah, you're funny. You know, I, women, to me, women make great team players, and I, I don't know why. Most of the time, women are so much meaner than men. I mean, when you get right down to it, you know, don't, don't poke a mama bear. Just don't, don't poke a mama bear. And I, I really, I enjoy women a lot more than I enjoy men for some reason. I just mm -hmm. don't have the same kind of relationships. Um, I have some amazing male friends, but the, it's different. It really is the different. Dynamic, it's different. It is. This, I, team, team, teamwork, you know, I love the, now that we're redefining things like accomplishment, I really like the fact that we're talking about that. Well, redefine what affection is or, or not redefine, yeah. but really trying to see the, how, I think definitions are fluid. But when I think about accomplishment, I must be so honest. I am not a team player. I never have been a team player. I was so bad. I'm not a team player. And part of the reason is I do not, because I did tell someone, my God, you know what? Get whatever because you're not doing your work. And I, 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 I know. So I don't, I'm not, I'll be so honest. I'm not a team player. And not only that, I do not take direction <laughs> if someone i have a problem if someone tells me what to do i'm like okay but delete <laughs> that's me do not tell me if you want something done ask me i'll crawl through broken glass if you tell me to do something yeah. you can watch my ass walk right out the door i, I will i rebel on every level and like you know, every level and i tell you michelle working in finance as a as a wealth uh, you know wealth advisor it was what 85% for the last hundred years is just males. Mm -hmm. And then, and then on top of it is all like, it's all about comparing sizes. How much did you bring in? What did you do? Everything, everything was extremely, extremely, uh, achievement oriented based on the numbers. It doesn't matter whether the client's needs were met, they were happy. Oh, the fact that I got good numbers, I must be a good advisor. Yeah, right. bullshit. <laughs> we know it's not true. But it was very driven by that. And I'll be really honest, for the first 18 years, it spoke my language. Because unlike that, it's black, it's, it, don't tell me what anything, the numbers will speak for themselves. Right. And then I realized that's not how the world is. It's, it's nice to be, to be to realize there's something softer there's something beautiful going to dish out these people's food in the morning brought me so much more joy than just the numbers you know when i went to yeah. work yeah yeah well and there's also something as a creative person when you said that i think about this would i rather see a black and white photo or a photo with 3d color mm. but i actually 
can enjoy the black and white photo at times as well. So I think there's that time and a place thing. Yes. You know, yes. and when you're talking about really the I yes. person, you know, you've got these four base emotions and accomplishment. You know, we go there first because for me, accomplishment was easy. I can look and see I'm accomplished. I, I don't have a problem with that. And if you tell me I'm not, I'm like, whatever. You know, you can tell me I'm not. I got out of bed 29 years and had a panic disorder. That's accomplished. Amazing. You know, it might not be what you think. You might yeah. think, oh, you wrote 23 books. I don't care about the books. Yeah. Like, seriously, I just like telling stories. The yes. podcast is the same to me as writing a book. I can do the same thing. I'm just telling a different story. And this is way easier because Grammarly sucks when it rips you apart. Right? Do you use Grammarly? <laughs> yes, I do. I do. Grammarly, yes, Grammarly. That's a mind of its own. It's not a person, right? I'm like an idiot, though. I mean, it yeah. just like marks so up cool. my whole page. And I'm like, what? What? I love What's it. with that? You know, I argue with Grammarly. You know, Michelle, it's so funny. I just love it <laughs> because you have a diff. You, our brains are quite uh, are different, so we complement. That you know, there was a time to me, accomplishment means if I was top ten percent of production, I'm happy. <laughs> That's yeah. all I wanted. I'm like, oh my God. And if someone won, if someone did better than me, I'm like, fuck. Oh, oh, I, I had to do health better. club sales, health club <laughs> membership sales. Okay. For a long time. Cause I loved it. You know, if you want to diet, I'll pull you into my office. I'll show you the club. And I'm like, do you feel like you're fat? This is how to get a woman. Do you feel like you're fat? Oh my God. Yes. I said, then you need to be here. And you yeah. need to come see me every day. And I'm going to remind you that you're not fat, but if you don't come here, you're going to be fat. <laughs> Sign on the dotted line. Sign on the dotted line. Every wow, way to go. I would have hired you in a second. <laughs> I know. And see that she said, and people, I knew what to get to. And the numbers, I was like the top 10 producer all the time. Like all the time. Good, I remember yeah. being in a club that wasn't even built yet. The club was like next door being built. And we had this warehouse with gym equipment in it. And I sold more than people that were selling in the club. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's just all about I would be doing you know, that too. Yeah, it's about knowing your business and it's about confidence, okay? So here's the thing. Accomplishment is probably about co uh, um, confidence. Yes. But you can be accomplished in one area and not be accomplished in another. I was not. When it came to parenting, I sucked. Mm -hmm. But so like, that's why I like things that can be counted. Black because white. the numbers can. I told myself the numbers cannot lie. But we know the numbers can lie. The numbers <laughs> can lie. And the reason you know, I, I have 271 not. kids, and some of them are good and some of them are bad. And they are not a reflection of my parenting. No. Because I, the video, yeah. your <laughs> parenting skills, there's nobody that has great parenting skills. <laughs> and I hate that the reflection of my skills is my adult children walking around making what? really bad choices. Yes. Because I'm like, I didn't teach you that. <laughs> no. I, I didn't teach you that. You know, and then daughter, I'm like, really? Is that what it's come to? Is that I have to, <laughs> you're so cute. I have to tell you, you know, I love your story about the uh, driving the kids in a bus. So my daughters were uh, 14 and 16 and they wanted to go to, or they were like 16 and se well, 15 and 17. They wanted to, with their friends, they wanted to go to a Britney Spears concert. So then uh, <laughs> Becky, my daughter's fr uh, friend's dad, loaned me his, his big SUV that could seat, seat like seven kids. So I had these <laughs> seven girls in there, these teenagers, all going to the Britney Spears concert. I have to tell you something so funny. So all these girls are sharing their life experiences. It's not a long life, but they're sharing it. Right. They, they had a shock because I don't really drink. They had a shock. I'd never been drunk in my life. <laughs> I said, I could, I said, they said, uh, Jen, have you, when were you drunk? When did you get drunk when you're a teenager? I mean, all teenagers get drunk. I said, you might be surprised. I didn't know. I never, ever, I never got drunk. I can drink, I can drink, but I, did. but it wasn't an accomplishment because I thought I was losing. I lost out on something. Right. <laughs> you could never play. Never. What was it called? I never. I never, I think is what's called. And they I never, I've never, I've never got drunk. You had, you had a drink. I never really got drunk. I've never really done those things because part of it, I don't know why, but anyhow, but I thought you, the subjectivity of the word accomplishment, right, right. they were bragging on, on the drinking they did. <laughs> I'm like, here they are. I never drank. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, 
Yeah, there's no me because I've it. definitely had <laughs> you're, you're funny. It's funny you're funny. After, after the suicide, I haven't drank since then. No. Like I stopped. Yeah. I mean, I can sip on something, but I'll never get past that line again. Mm. Uh, never. And it's, um, it's a fear that I don't mind having, but just, uh, they call it liquid courage. And I saw <laughs> what it did. Yeah. And wow, it was bad. You find words for everything, Michelle. I'm sure there's I a do. I'm a writer. Name on it. You know, no, my favorite word is dazzle. But That's you know, dazzling. Michelle, I can tell you, I never, I never, I never drank. It's not important to me. I drink uh, occasionally a glass of wine and I, or a Tom Collins, very occasionally. And to see my daughter use drinking as self medication, yeah, you know, in her anxiety and depression. Now that I tell you that to me made me feel more like a failure than all the, all the t being on the top 10% for years as a, as a wealth right. advisor. Yeah. I was as a giving. parent, you feel failure when your adult children go make bad choices. We, we so wear cool. the failures and the successes of our children, Michelle. You were a, you're a mom. We, yeah, whether we yeah. like it or not, people can cycle. They can tell us, oh, it's not your fault, whatever. We yeah, still it wear is. it. Yeah. It is. <laughs> we, we laugh because our worst child yeah. is our best adult. Ah. And I, I tell her, I tell her that I say, God, who would have That's thought crazy. you were so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. I, we did not get along at mm. all, you know, because we had a blended family and mm. there was a divorce and, and her dad was not very favorable to me, which I give oh. him every credit. May he rest in peace. And so it was crazy that now she and I have such a great relationship and she has my grandson. And wow. yeah, That's and amazing. I uh, That's like a gift, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. And she's so good. She's so good with him, you know, and um I see people today letting children they, they don't understand discipline is a loving endeavor. And so, yeah. you know, they they don't really discipline well and he's just a well behaved little three year old young man. Nice. And my mom got to meet him this last weekend and he's so good and she kept saying wow he's a really good kid because remember I had foster kids for so long and they're not good kids you know they don't know how to be good kids no, and so to see the difference of a child who was nurtured and taken care of and and that versus the last you know 270 kids um, it's a refreshing journey and so she kept making statements of wow he's just so good he's he's just such a great little kid no. and he is He's just adorable, but he is fed and he is nurtured and he doesn't go to daycare. You know, um, we keep him in the family. And so he's got, he's got a pretty nice little life, you know, yes. he's very loved. Yes. And so it's, a uh, it's amazing. It's nice. There's not enough of that around. Yeah. But so, so accomplishment is subjective and it's what you feel. I always say, even in my wealth planning, I said it's success that's self-defined. What makes you feel successful? I'm pursuing right. that, right? So we should and change that from uh, accomplishment to fulfillment. Yes. But I, think I, still so. think, I still think accomplishment has to go with, because there's some sort of, I can feel fulfilled without, be, without achieving anything. I think it's about achievement. You have to achieve something. Yeah. Yeah, you have to achieve. I think so. I think we're born, we are made to want to achieve something. Yeah. And that's so, it's so fulfilling to achieve. Just like we don't have to, we don't have to achieve to feel fulfilled, but there's something fulfilling about achieving. That's what I'm saying. It's not yeah. necessarily the accomplishment, the destination, but the journey of, a, uh, you know, achieving. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So we can balance that. So the next one is acceptance. Now that was really hard for me because, um, being gay, yes. that was hard for me because I did not, my, my family still, I have a huge family. They don't ever contact me ever. Like I don't, I, I was on a live video today and saw two of my cousins and went, wow. wow. You know, like, um, it's, it's just that they, they have, if you want my honest truth, they have failed to provide love to me that I felt a family offered. They just, I don't really exist to them. And so that's been very difficult for me. Um, 
My I'm goodness. also hear you. I yeah, so yeah. You know, I'm so excited. My girls are coming from the hall for the holiday because my family. I, I never have that. I mean, I have my daughter. You know, and so that's always wonderful. And we just look at it like sometimes if we don't feel that it's going to be what we expect, we just say, you know what? Like we we didn't really want to do Christmas this year, so we said let's have Christmas in July. <laughs> we just the day. Why not? We Why not? Together. Yeah, we ate lunch together on Christmas and counted it as another day, and just didn't. We weren't disappointed about it, and so that was awesome. Um, but if you're talking about acceptance, this is literally. I hate to say that it has some outside acceptance, outside of, of you, but it is absolutely acceptance of self. And until I literally went before my Lord naked and vulnerable and said, what do you think of me? Because I was so busy worried about what the outside world was thinking about my sexuality. Mm. Why? You know, Why? I mean, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a limit, you know, I don't believe in pedophilia. Um, I, I don't believe preying upon young people is okay, but other than than that or some, you know, crazy stuff like bestiality, I just don't even <laughs> Don't I, even go there. I, it, it just doesn't count in this conversation. But when you're talking about relationships, yes. who cares who you're sleeping with? Yes. What business potential is to it? potential adults. Yes, it's just not that important. And here's the big deal. I rarely sleep with anybody. So does that make me a better person? You know, I'm pretty sure I'm a virgin again, so. <laughs> I heard that can happen a few times in a lifetime. I've heard it's that. It's happened to me. Oh, you're and funny. The first time the opportunity arises, I've already said, this is going to be very hard. I am very intimidated already. It used to be something I was really good at, and now I don't know. So I'm intimidated. So I spent all those years <laughs> practicing to have, you know, but God, I don't even know how to play three. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard that sex is like riding a bicycle. You never really forget how. Good, well, I hope I don't hit a parked car. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. It's too funny. Okay. So no, I'm a little worried, but I, I'm, sure, I'm sure that it will come back. I'm really more worried about kissing. Like how uh, you kissed for a very I long find time. kissing the most intimate thing Me too. And I'm really worried about that because yeah. I haven't done that for a long time. Mm. So except well, practice on the practice on Annie. You've got Annie, your, 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 your like, anxiety like, don't get it all. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. You know what? I think that the most important thing, like to me, intimacy, physical intimacy starts with the mind like everything else oh yeah yeah yeah. and they say Absolutely. you know your your brain is the largest sex organ it's true and, oh yeah uh, if you don't get mind. this going the yeah. rest of it just doesn't really matter my thing is the brain goes <laughs> i get that going easily <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, you know i'm i always said i was such an okay. asexual person because i really i am not somebody who thinks about sex all day i don't think about it with people that i meet on the street and stuff. i just don't and i have friends that they're like oh my god i'd hit that and i'm like hit what and they're like <laughs> her or him and i'm like <laughs> you help them. Your friends but are interesting. Right. You guys that's talk right. about things yeah, I would like, never dare yeah, say. No, and and just, I'm just weird. I've always been weird like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so acceptance. <laughs> get that we have to have it ourselves. Let's move to the attention and affection, because okay, that's okay. what we're talking about. All this Intimate. affection. Affection has to start from within. I don't care what anyone says, because people, you cannot. You know what? To re, to be able to receive love, to be able to receive acceptance. I think you have to start with accepting yourself. Mm -hmm. That's right? absolutely key. Yeah. And you know, how many bad relationships are there out there now? Like, seriously, do you know anybody in a good relationship? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do you know their key? What, what's, what the key is? Acceptance. Yeah, acceptance and communication. Yes, very yeah, much they so. They communicate. Because respect, you know respect is huge. Even when mm -hmm. they don't feel the love at that moment, they respect. Yeah, respect the relationship and that it's yes. going to ebb and flow. It's not always, you know, um, it's not hot. Thing. It's not always red hot no. and heavy. It's not going to be. I, I, love, I mean, I, I, I'm going to be the one percent that's going to sustain the red hot and heavy for the rest of my life. <laughs> I haven't got. I'm not in a relationship. Oh, really? I, 
I'm expecting you know, here I am. I'm just barely starting one, you know, and it's so tepid, you know, and, and that was one of the things when we were talking about, did I feel love? Yeah. No, not really. Because, you know, there's these boundaries in my relationship. There's love. And we've already been to that place. Yes. Okay. So we already know that that's all good. Yes. So we have a wall built to go back and make sure that pieces of the, we didn't understand how to have an extremely healthy relationship. Okay. We lacked in an area of communication. We were pretty bad at it. And so now we are honest with our communication. So we're practicing that. And it's a little hard. You know, it's a little hard because you throw this stuff out there. What we would have had a five day, you don't speak to me because I would get the silent treatment for like up to five days. Like that's, oh you know, I always thought it was cute, you know, because then I'd be like, I'd walk through the room and I'd say, oh, hey, did you? Oh, I forgot. You're not talking to me. So, <laughs> you know, because I'm such an asshole. And so, you know, but that communication thing, so it's a little different. It's a lot different than it used to be. Right. And I don't know how to react. I don't know how to act and I don't know how to react, but I've brought that to the table, you know, cause we were like, wow, this is a little different. And I'm like, well, what do you expect? I'm not allowed to do this, 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 or this, which were the whole and combination of our entire relationship. We were based on intimacy. You know, I mean, and I said, so I don't know what to do. Like, I feel like I have to hold back everything. And then it was like, oh, well, that's true. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, we talk about some things. And so we've rediscovered that intimate friendship, you know, because you have a friendship and it's not always that intimate friendship. Yes. When you know, when you know more about someone than anyone else in the world, that's intimacy right there. Yes, when you can bear parts of yourself you wouldn't with someone else. The trust. Yes. yes. Absolutely. It's yes. And so now we're just kind of molding into this thing. But I'm so used to getting my goodies, so to speak, my attention and my affection mm -hmm. from that outside entity. You know, that's it's always I've always had very passionate relationships. And so there's no wonder they fizzle out. You know, mm -hmm. what do you do when it gets tepid? And I like that part of relationship. I've always, even though I have that passion on a very high esteem, I like the day-to-days. Um, There's something sexy about the day-to-day. -day. For sure it is. Something sexy. It's, Absolutely. I think you've gone beyond the, your day-to-day -day reminds me where you, you're, you've you passed beyond um, the expectations and you're going to the sense of like, I'm here for you. Yeah, it's real. I know. I like it there. And I, yeah. I think, I think relationships are negotiations. They really are negotiations. Oh, yeah. Compromises. So that, yeah. Yeah. Now you're renegotiating the parameters because mm -hmm. it's the same Absolutely. two people who are now different. Because that's right. And we all, I'm hoping most of us, you know, what you want is someone, you know, of course, self-awareness is why I say it's so sexy is because then they can see for themselves. You're not having to say something so much. They can see, okay, we're, yeah. we're two different individuals. We're growing. And it's, I love the word acceptance because, mm -hmm. and you know, we don't want people to feel acceptance means you accept being treated badly. No. No. no and you know what? Acceptance is not, I'm always going to be this way. Accept me as I am because I never no. want to stop evolving. No. You know, except where I am today. Like I said, I was really offended when the answer to my oh, don't touch my pancake was, well, that's just who you are. Okay, don't be flippant to me because, you know, and two, that's not who I am. And I'm trying to change that, but it was a habit and I didn't catch it. You know, it was just a habit. It was, it was conditioning. And so that was really nice, but you really have to look at it like, can I accept you for who you are? Yes. Say, yes. absolutely. But does that mean if you're an ass that I need to accept that? It does not. That yeah. We're not talking about accepting behaviors. We're talking about accepting someone. And I think I always believed that people were innately good. And I don't believe that anymore. 
I do not believe that every person is innately good. I think there's some real jerks out there. Yes. And they're yes. always going to be jerks. And that's what, that's what makes a toxic person. And I don't like right. hanging out with jerks. No. You know, when you see, um, and I don't want to get specific. <laughs> <laughs> when you see, I have someone in mind. When you see someone continue to do the same thing over oh, yeah. and over and over. And then when they, when you bring it up, because I'll accept you for who you are, given that you want to be a better person. It's kind of like I have this thing. Yeah. I always expect us to want to be a better person. I but when, yeah, when you're stuck in that rut and then you lie about it and you don't take your participation, when you turn everything around on me, that it's my fault. Like I would remember mentioning something about my daughter uh, or mentioning something about this person's daughter immediately i would get it back what a horrible mother i am mm -hmm. and i was like dude seriously can we not have a conversation this is i'm not and and i know myself well i wasn't blaming or shaming i'm just saying this probably needs to change for life to resume normalcy yes. you know but it was yeah. always thrown back in my face well you're a horrible mom look at this look at that and i'm like well, one, I was a really good mom because I fed my kids, I provided for my kids, I loved my kids, I educated my kids, and I disciplined my kids. Whatever the little assholes want to do when they turn 18 is not on me. It is right. not on me anymore. I am not taking it on anymore. Now, the problem is we all make mistakes and we all make good choices. In your heart, are you trying to do the right thing? So what I hear from you, there's a lot, there's quite a large degree of self-acceptance, which is really refreshing because what it's allowed you to do is to be transparent. Yes. And that is a, right. a bit vulnerable at times. Yeah. And so that transparency, I now worry about who comes into my world. So with that acceptance, I accept you for who you are because I am not your judge, but whether I want you involved in my life, is another yes. yeah another story completely. and, yes. and self-acceptance with anxiety being such a forefront of my day i had such self-loathing mm. that i really had to turn that around and so yes. i dig who i am today you know i mean i know i had some good points then and i probably have some now but just that i'm a peaceful presence for me if you make me angry enough, I have to walk away yes. because that means that you're compromising my personal peace and that relationship that you talked about, the perfect relationship is the one that's perfect for you, that you can compromise some things, but you'll never settle. Someone that will allow you to say, I don't like that. And the answer is, okay, well, I do. So I'm going to do it and you don't have to. Yes. You know, and being able to have a life that's not driven completely around that person. Yes. Like I always look at it like this. I don't want to work with my lover. I don't. <laughs> no. I don't. No. No. One, I write. And so no. it's too hard. But yeah. when I come home, I want to come home. Yes. You know? I want to cook together. I want to go out and sit by the pool together. I want to barbecue. If and I don't even like to barbecue, but if you know that's what it is, when they will barbecue, yeah. you know, yeah. I want to go to the movies. But I also want to sit on the couch and watch movies. And when we're not at work, or when you're not in your meantime, I like sharing that, you know. And I can be in another part of the house and still respect your presence. You know, I love this whole. I just, uh, Michelle, I just love this whole idea of acceptance because like when I think back, I felt I, I, I sense that I was, uh, because I, I mean, I really, really believe once you make a choice, you learn to accept, but I always felt if whenever I wanted to expect something better of the other person, they said they, their whole thing was, well, uh, expectations are not good to you, you know, just manage your expectations. So sometimes I think there's this, this sense like 
there's acceptance and then the other person is just they don't want to they don't see anything they're doing wrong and so like get to you know it's i'm not doing anything wrong it's problem is your expectations right and you know they can use the expectations are premeditated resentment you know you shouldn't have expectations but here's the long and short of it i expect you to treat me kindly i expect you to honor our boundaries that we established yeah. together and i i truly believe that one of the biggest pieces to a a um, romantic relationship is being able to live together and not drive each other crazy yes. like if you put the toilet paper to go up and it drips down the back i do not need to be in a relationship with you yes because yes. that's one thing that bothers me ideally <laughs> <laughs> but it's not uh, but you know what I'm saying? If you know, like, um, we, we had to establish a boundary. I have an open door policy at my house. You're welcome at my house anytime. Yeah. That is no longer in existence. That yeah. will stop. Because then I end up with every Joe Schmo off the street who doesn't want to take care of themselves, needing a place to stay for a week or two or 10 or five years. Yeah. You know? And so we've shut that down. And so I look at that and say, I don't mind making that compromise. Not at all. You know, not at all. Yes. But if you don't talk about it and you don't know and you don't have that, I guess it's just the ability to come to you and say whatever I want to. Yes. You know, I, I have an expectation in our podcast that you and I discuss what we want to talk about to a degree. I mean, we're pretty off the cuff. Yes. I have an idea of what we're going to do. And if something bothers one of us, then it needs to be brought up immediately. You know, because yes. then we'll just fix it. Um, yes. I like to fight, but I do not like to fight my past. I like to fight for solutions. So yes. if I'm having a conversation with you about something that I want to change, it's because it's not working and I want to find a better way. Mm. It's not, I don't have, like, I don't like being told what to do, but I will never tell you what to do. My daughter. Yes. I would say, Jay, will you clean your room? No. And I'm like, what? I asked you nicely. And she said, that's right. You asked me. And I said, no, next time you want me to clean my room, tell me to clean my room. I could not do it. Oh. I could not go in and say, clean your room. Interesting. I, I just would not. That's not who I wanted to be. So from the time she was little, if I would say, Jay, will you clean your room? It was either yes or no. But what's funny, she's really a neat freak. <laughs> she'll mess it up, but then she'll clean yes. it up. So we learned that about each other. And she still, yes. to this day, if you want me to do something, tell me to do it. And I'm like, no, I will ask you so that you get to make a choice. You know what? We really teach people how to treat us. Bottom line is we teach people how to treat us. And the, my, you know, I, the, I would say the last, I, last relationship I was, I think, right off the bat after the first date i knew that was not the person i would want in my future but i kind of felt almost bad to feel that which is so stupid because i thought i should be accepting because i'm really buddhist and i'm like i should be no and and then her behavior just showed me later yeah you were definitely you know the, <laughs> the betrayal and just the, the the i think the worst part is you know that some people um you can they will never look inside themselves that they have the problem and I really, and I used to be someone who takes, it's not like I'm bragging, no. I uh, take full responsibility for mine, but I also tended to take responsibility for someone else, <laughs> you know? And I'm thinking, but you want to be where it's so, like a partnership. Right. And I love what, what you kept saying, you are accepting someone who is themselves wanting to see how they are impacting the relationship. Sure. Right. Absolutely. So, Why accept someone who cannot see that they, you know, and then, and you, tr you, you teach people how to treat. I was willing to, um, you know, sometimes, and I thought I was being the bigger person to accept the scraps under the table. Why was I even bother with that? Now I'm thinking you've got to be know. kidding me. But we like, have to learn. It's a lesson, you know, every person in your life is a reason, a season or a lifetime. And yeah. there's always a lesson. I love it. Yeah. And sometimes it. you try and get rid of people that were actually lifetimers that you got to bring them back. <laughs> you did that. You're sweet. But that, I, why, why, Michelle, so many women 
stay in relationships. Again, this acceptance. Why so many people accepting stuff? Because what we're they call failing it. if we leave. What they don't understand. Uh, Why yeah. do you get in something so fast that then when you make the determination that, oh my God, this doesn't work, then you're a failure? No, the failure was you didn't slow down, take it one moment at a time and value the getting to know each other without having to have some sort of, I think we just feel like we have to own each other. Like I'm tired, <laughs> just own me. Yeah. Like I can go back to, uh, what's it, uh, wives club. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yes, uh, yes. It was the, the first wives club. First the wives club. First wives club. club. You don't own me. Yeah. Don't no. I am here of my own volition. The door is right there. I can walk out at any day I want to. If yeah. I sign a contract with you that says the rest of my life, apparently I mean it. <laughs> so we can trust now, you know, and <laughs> I don't want to hurt other people. I don't want to be in a relationship that I know is not going to work because then I hurt someone. Yeah. And so, um, I accept me for who I am today, but I have expectations of wanting to be better, a better me in the yes. future. So and you, I love that. You, yeah. you see, that's it. Two people who actually want to be the best versions of themselves. And if there is a, a blind, a blind sightedness, we all have blind spots. We all do have blind spots. Mm -hmm. Well, but and I think it's just, yeah. it's too difficult for, when we don't know a solution, when we don't see a solution, it, it's easier just to not look at it. You right. know, I think if you're empowered enough, like I've empowered my best friend for all of two years to yeah. make good choices, to not stay in a relationship that was depriving her of her, her self-worth mm. and but then, you know, I don't know how many times we'd be talking about something and I'd say, get divorced. Yes. Get divorced for her to say, well, I'm real. I'm trying to make it work. And I'm like, yeah, but they aren't. You can't one person try and make something with two people work. If they don't accept their responsibility in it, then it's never going to work. Yeah. One day just up, moves out, says I'm done. And I said, there you go. It's about time. And, yeah, it's and you know what, Michelle, our brain is always like, remember the, the, you saw this comedian, they're all, our brain, we know the red flags are always there. I knew all the time, all the time. I don't want, yeah, I love it. All the time. But I, I just, I have a, I have, I don't call it a problem. I do not like to hurt anyone. So I will let them leave first before I tell them I don't want to be in it. But is that fair to them? Uh, uh, yeah, neither of us. I, will, I mean, all the time I was like, no, this is not the person. This is not my future. This is not. That's why I didn't even want to make commitments financially. This is not the person. This is not the person. This is not the person. I don't like the way she treats me. All the time I knew that. I knew that. But just to just, but I just forget. It just seems so rude to hurt somebody, to tell them I really don't want to be with you. <laughs> okay, so... But now I'm not like that anymore. Now I'm just like, romance okay. writer, right? I mean, you know, I started out writing romance. It, I didn't know that. <laughs> did you not know that. And did you ever read the Dear Gabby column? No. Lesbian <laughs> romance advice? You never read Dear Gabby? Really? I never. I read Dear Abby, yeah. No, Dear Gabby. <laughs> I never read Dear Gabby. Yes, so well, I wrote this column for like four or five years. I don't know. Um, oh. I wrote, that's where I started. I write romance. That's what I started out in and that's what i'm really good at is writing romance and i would always say this why are you sticking around in a relationship that you're not putting any effort into and thinking to yourself oh but i might hurt them you think that being i put all the effort in it i put all the effort in it but i knew i knew that person is not mine but i didn't want to hurt the person yeah but it wasn't here and you know how heartfelt love is yes the love it actually comes from here not here, not here. <laughs> no, it's here. Uh, you know, we have to have the, the heart involved. And so I think a lot of people keep themselves safe. Yes. By staying and they have these reasons. But I always say to this, if you're not into me, if, if you just know that that's not, not her, could you please just tell me yeah. because I deserve someone who does feel that way for me.
Yes. Like someone wanted to be what you said the last three years. And I would say, but that's not the life I want to live. Yeah. Oh yes, you, you, I'll do any, I'm like, dude, seriously, you deserve someone to love you. Like you want to be yes. loved. Yes. That's not me. Yes. Get yes. that, find that, you know? Yeah. And I literally saw this person just get on the personals and just chat up anything and just, and then ends up with somebody within 90 days moving in and you know they don't know each other no. you know and they've already had some problems and it's crazy because everybody in the world wants to come and tell me their problems and i'm like i don't <laughs> care like, i don't care you don't understand i don't care the only thing i care about is those children that they're affecting and that i care about but i have no control or power in this so i want to push that away because therein lies the problem you want to just find the first thing that might look like it works and then you're going to wonder why you guys have problems you wonder <laughs> why you know this and wonder why that and then i look at it my ex i fell in love with her the first night i met her um. absolutely absolutely but you know what i didn't like her until a year later mm. because i knew her well enough at that point to actually wage an opinion I was enamored by, yeah. and of course she was beautiful and intelligent and funny and witty and charming, but it took a getting to know you a year and we lived together before I would have ever said that that was something that I would consider for a long-term relationship. Because you know, we get into things very easily, getting out of them is like getting out of a box with the... <laughs> You know, I don't like to hurt anybody, but in the end, I ended up hurting myself too. Yeah, so, exactly. so acceptance, acceptance is accepting that you can accept people, not accepting the situation. Right. You can accept it. Walk out of the situation. Yeah. And, you, yeah. and the minute you are not accepted for who you are, when you're trying your best, bye. <laughs> I know, and I, I should have done that. <laughs> yeah. I love it. We all learn a lesson. Yeah. And, and of course. Lessons. Who I am today is vastly different from last year. Who we yeah. are today is different from last week. And we're yes. all learning. We want to be with someone who wants to keep moving forward. I love that. And what's the third one, Michelle? Except okay, the third one is, well, and I group these together, affection and attention. Yeah. So let's do attention first. Attention, social media, phones, computers, outside interest, those all get in the way of giving attention. Now, most people, if you give them a portion of the day, undivided attention are absolutely okay, right? Yes. Nobody needs attention 24 hours a day, seven no. days a week. Yeah. But if you're not giving them a piece of you of a day, yeah. I think that, and we're talking relationships, of, of yes. course. Yeah then I don't think you're doing your due diligence. And do not come to me at 10 o'clock at night and want to fall into bed and have a little rompy romp when you didn't pay attention to me all day long. <laughs> if you can't give me attention at any point during the day, I'm going to sleep. Yeah. You know, we talked about that in the mind, getting the mind involved. Treat me like I deserve to be treated during the day, starting at six o'clock in the morning, yeah. And I'll meet you at 10 o'clock in that bed. I think, I think a yeah, good bedroom talk starts with good connection Absolutely. the rest of the day, obviously. And well, it's uh, just the treatment. It's just the way. You're right. We allow people to treat us certain ways. You know, when we look at people and go, why do you treat me like that? Well, honey, because the first time they did it, you allowed it. And you stuck around for a second time and a third and a 53rd and a 453rd. Yeah. If you do that, you have trained that individual to know that they can treat you however they want. Mm -hmm. And see, my thing is now, you don't get to treat me that way. No, I'm different. Not I'm a treat different you. person from what I was. And I never used to be like that. And I thought I'd try and be this accepting. No, I'm not doing that again. And yeah. it's really wonderful. And all I can do is, you know, how you, you're just so thankful you're not in it anymore. That's all you can do. You're like, 
oh my god I'm so when you leave a relationship someone's throwing you scraps and you're picking them up and now I'm like fuck it I'm gone baby but the beautiful thing is that when you really you know it's so true you can you can love you can love deeply it doesn't necessarily mean it will be reciprocated it doesn't no, it doesn't and but, those are harmful yeah. i think those are harmful to us oh so yeah to look at it as not everybody we meet is that one lobster you know and i always laugh you know my lobster <laughs> i love lobster <laughs> my little lobster from friends my little lobster you know now we're stuck with each other so let's just try and do it right Take time to do it right. If we're going to really spend the rest of our lives together, that starts now. So let's just do it right. You know, there's no sense in jumping in. And, and well, I love your transparency. I find it really disarming. I don't really, uh, please, I'm not, if I say I'm not trying to, to put attention on you, but I've never, ever been in a relationship that I felt uh, could be that transparent. Weren't you telling me? Your transparency is amazing. <laughs> it has to be for me. Yeah. Uh, because if not, then I'm trying to be somebody that I'm not, or I'm trying yeah. to meet your expectations and I can't. Mm. So if I can just be the best person that I am, and I want someone who enjoys most of me, right. you know, like I know that there's pieces like my anxiety. I still have anxiety. Nobody wants to deal with that. And so I do the best to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to deal with that. And you just deal with the rest, mm -hmm. you know? And like I said, we tripped up last weekend and my anxiety popped over into her plate. And you know, I'm sorry. Um, but when you're talking about attention, you, you know, there's times that people need attention. Oh yes. And when you fail to provide them that attention, that is a travesty to your relationship. Starving. Yeah. It's starving someone. It you is. Starving it them. is. Yeah. And, and I've been starved for attention for about four years. Mm. And so for me, I am hesitant, you know, and the person that I'm dating, they were in a relationship. So they didn't really have that piece of it. So I think it's a little different for us. Like, mm. you know, I like spending more time, but you really just have to be honest about where you're at. And it doesn't mean that you're right just because you're honest, but sometimes just allow me to say how I feel. Mm. It's not about, is it right or wrong? Yeah. But just allow me to have those feelings. Now, here's the thing. Then I get to do the same. You know, yes, you don't yes. feel like coming up today. That's cool. I get it. Yes. yes you know, and yes. I'll go pout and throw my little tiny fit <laughs> and then move on to the next stage. So. You, behave, you behave like a woman. <laughs> Typical lady. Um, this, uh, this, uh, what's that? I love it. I just love I need my attention, damn it. Yeah, you do. I work real hard by myself all week. And so when I get to the goodies, as I call it, you know, this is my time off. When, when we spend time together, then I don't have to work. Because what? I'm too, you know, can't control myself. But I spend so much time alone that I end up working. Mm -hmm. Because I enjoy it. You know, I mean, yeah. I don't really like to watch TV by myself too much sometimes. Uh, and I go places, but it's just not as enjoyable. And so by the time I get to a weekend, I'm ready to, to spread my wings and play. And so when I have to wait, I throw fit like a two-year-old um, by myself and yeah. try never to throw that shame, you know, down. Um, but when you're talking about affection or attention, you need to be able to read when someone needs attention. I was just going to say, we're so in sync. I was just going to say, if I could use a word, to, to describe love, it's being attuned. Attuned, absolutely. Being you attuned. have to observe. And you know, some people need alone time as much as they need attention. Yeah. Like I need attention, like my partner needs alone time, you know? And being attuned to that. Yeah, I just think, wants oh, to I know you now need your alone time and walk away, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, can we just get a balance here? You know, because sometimes like, if you need alone time today and I need attention, we're in direct opposition of each other. Mm. So could you have half a day alone and part of a day with me or three quarters of a day alone and spend some time with me? I'm perfectly fine with that, you know, but I don't want to be that person who takes scraps. 
No. And, and we've talked about this, about settling. You know, if it's meant to be, it'll be. Right yes. now, it's very enjoyable. And if it's meant to be, it'll be. But when you're, when you're talking about that, you must be attuned to, you know, what. And I think if you're willing to listen, people will talk. Yes. If you have ears that are open, eyes that can see, and a heart that can feel, you will find people sharing with you. Yes. And, you know, sometimes too much, you know, when you're willing and, and they take advantage of it. But with attention, if you want it, give it. Give yes. it to get it. Give it. That's okay. a big one. Give it to get it. And then you're talking about affection. So, when you're talking about balancing out these four base emotions, not all of them are the I word. There's a lot of team in here. Yeah. There's a lot of team. And so I think having people in your life who can read you. Um, so attuned. Yeah, attuned. And you know what, Michelle? Also, it's like everybody's like I, I talk, you know, like the book, the love languages. Everybody's love language is love. So what we tend to do is we tend to love people the way we want to be loved. Yeah, it's all the wrong. They want to be loved. Yeah, all wrong. And yeah. see, that's hard because you want to give it to get it. We have this rule, and and mind you, you know, this has been a long term relationship. We have this rule: treat the other one like you want to be treated, but remember that they want to be treated a certain way as well. Yeah. So the five love languages are great, but they also change. Today, I might not like having quality time because I'm really busy. Today, yes. I might like having a gift just so that I know that you're there, but I don't have time for the quality time or, yes. you know, Very service. Um, you want to cook dinner for me every night and do this, but, I, you know, it makes me rush to have to get off. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a very good eater. So one of the least things I want you to do is cook for me. It, it just, you know, yes. but I like cooking with you, you know, so you just have to listen, listen to the person, you know, listen, Linda. Have you ever seen that little, little Hispanic kid on there? Linda. <laughs> listen, yeah. listen. Listen. I love that. Listen, listen, you know, because the body speaks, the mind reflects and the mouth delivers. But what I really like about my relationship is it's not, there's not always a lot of spoken words. You know, there's a lot of intuition going on. Um, and then you recap. So are you feeling, uh, well, yes, I am. You know, because not always is it easy to bring stuff up. So when you're willing to listen, sometimes you just have to kind of toss it out there and say, I feel as though there's some distance. Is there a reason? Well, yeah, but I just didn't know how to say blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. You know, now you've said it. Now what are we going to do with it? So I think that you're looking at when you have base emotions, let's talk about single versus a relationship. Because really, we're, we're both single. You know, I mean, yeah. mine's moving. But affection, when you're single, where do you get that affection? You know, people have pets. Um, I think I love self love. Yes. Like, <laughs> I love it. Well, some of the things, are, some of the ways I get it, I don't think I'm supposed to talk about it online. <laughs> but um, yeah, and um, that's okay. I'm quite happy. <laughs> I mean, but the thing is, is you got to know yourself well enough to know. And if it doesn't feed you and it doesn't work, because like you and I could do the same things, and it might not feed me, and it feeds no. you. And, and the other thing, and I, I learned something, you know what I mean? Much as I like affection from, from, an in, from another individual, I learned that uh, I, I've come to the point where I want something, the affection to be lasting. So I've, nice. I've, I've had experiences where I did get my affection, <laughs> but it's, it's not worth it. If they still think you're going to be there for the next couple of days and you really both said you had no plans on that. So I learned there's a, there is, I think people are so beautiful. I'm learning to, to treat them like, um, uh, protect their souls as well as mine. And you know, even if you, so more now my, my, my philosophy before used to be about 
uh, intention. Now it's about outcome. So oh, there you go. Right. So we have intention and we have outcome. That's yeah, all. the impact. What's the impact you're going to make? So you might have had the best intentions, but the impact left someone a bit diminished or hurt. It doesn't matter what you intended. You know what I mean? And I don't, they say, oh, well, we're not everybody. No one's brother's keeper. They need to take care of the emotions. No, I, I feel a bit irresponsible for my actions. But uh, uh, you know what's really interesting? Uh, when I was, uh, I mean, I was raised where there was not a lot of uh, physical um, expression mm -hmm. of, uh, of affection, yet I'm a very extremely physical person. My love language, one, two, three, four, is touch. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's five love languages. I'll be really, I've, never felt, I've never felt a need to be understood. I never felt a need um, to be affirmed, although it is intoxicating when someone looks up to you. But my love language is touch. I really like touching. But when I went to the Mediterranean, I was so flawed because people touch. Right, and all the time. Also, and at first I was like, whoa, what is this and about? It's not really even just hugs. It's as they walk by, it's just a hand here or just rub your back. I love it. Exactly. And see, that's me. I'm like you. I mean, give me the time. And that, see, that's affection. Yes. for me you got to touch me and yes. it's not in a sexual manner i mean that that's great but it's knowing you are there again yeah. do i see you do i see hear you I, yeah right it's touching my back when i walk in a door before you um and i do all those i'm big on touch you know in the car i slide my hand in yours yeah. um my mom I hold my mom's hand I still hold my mom's hand yeah uh, when we go places um, things like that really important I agree you know and like you said the affirmations I don't need you to tell me I'm wonderful I you need know you're wonderful <laughs> <laughs> yes touch tells yeah. me that if you don't want to touch me I'm probably not so wonderful in your book yeah uh, and I think that those things you know are really Especially with people with anxiety, you know, we're always yeah. wondering, what are you thinking? I mean, it just dawned on me. What are you thinking? What do you think about me? Am I, am I okay? Did I do this right? Did it? They're always questioning themselves to just sort of have this negative confidence. And so it's really important if you have someone who's anxious to listen, listen, and they might not know. And, you know, it might take you if one, if, if someone asks you a question, like when you ask me that question, you know, how would I feel love? Um, touch is a lot of it. That's the big thing is I don't have a lot of touch right now. Even my dog, she's over there laying on the floor, you know, and if she goes with me, she rides in the back seat. And I'm not used to that because her and I were always really, um, my dog and I were kind of inseparable until I took um, my friend's dog and had him for two months. And so now it's changed and that could have a lot to do with it. You know, and I start talking about her and she comes in here. Um, <laughs> but you know, even Callie and I are distant. And yeah. so I, I, I just, I don't know, you know, but you're talking the four base emotions, attention, yeah. affection, yeah. acceptance and accomplishment. And I don't think that you just have to be balanced in them. It's not, there's it's never going to be a perfect amount. You just have to fall towards the positive. And so if we're talking about anxiety and a perspective of positivity, if you look at these four areas of your life, do something about it. You know what's, yeah. What's really interesting, uh, Michelle, if I was, when I asked you, what does, uh, what does it look like to be loved? Yet, if I ask you to close your eyes, be quiet a little bit, and imagine, imagine times when you were loved, I bet you they'll come to mind. Yeah, touch. It's touch. Yeah. When did you feel, when I close my, when I think about it, when did I, I I've been loved a lot, you know, and I think about it, not in my childhood, but later in my life, and I think about it, Oh, I was like, and then I also go on the other side and say, well, that while they were showing ways of loving me, that was not my major love language. I saw the love in them. You know, I mean, I saw they were trying, they were loving me. And it's that, it's again, it's that gratitude It's looking in that hand again. I go back to that visual you did looking and I say, oh, my girls are coming this weekend. 
we choose to see what's in that hand of ours, don't we? What's in front of us. Yeah. Um, yeah. So balance those things out. And I know yeah. we're going to have to tie up this episode. Yes. yes. So, I love that. We talked about love a lot. <laughs> well, yeah, we talked about relationships and just, right. you know, general well-being. That It's a big piece of this. Anxiety, the positive perspective. We have to know what well-being is or we'll never achieve it. Yes. You cannot achieve or grasp something you do not know. Um, yes. In the master plan, the biggest pieces of your exercises come from describing a day living anxiety free. Love Make it. it in the future a couple of years. Beautiful. What is? Where do you get up? What kind of bed? Are you with somebody? Where are you living? Um, do you work? Do you go to work? Just where did you eat breakfast? What did you do for lunch? It just all of that. Just chart out a day. Then the next exercise is to take today and chart it out. And then the next exercise is compare those two and you have your challenge list. Yeah. And that's how I got from where I was to almost exactly like you said, you wanted to live in the Mediterranean. So you made it happen. I made it happen. I got everything back that I wanted so far and more. And what's crazy is I had to let go of a lot of things to get there that were not easy that I didn't really even know I'd have to let go of. Yes. So, um, you can achieve anything that you set your mind to as long as you can see it. If you see it, you can achieve it. Yes. So on those base emotions, we need to just focus our insight uh, into how we are in those areas. And like you said, if you close your eyes and think about it, I always say, ask yourself the question, the answer will come if you're open to it. Oh, sure. Ask yourself the question, ask, why do I feel alone at night? And I would say, because you are alone at night. <laughs> the reality is, is your dumbass is alone. You're laying in the bed alone. There's nobody. You're alone. That's what alone looks like. It's you. But, but again, but you are alone. It doesn't necessarily mean you're lonely. So that's good, you know. Yeah, yeah but you know why? Because you're alone. Because that's why right. <laughs> you're alone. <laughs> but I can feel alone in a room full of a million people too. And that's it's even worse. Don't okay. understand me. Yeah. Yeah. That's and being worse. yeah, with that anxiety, let me tell you, I could I could feel misunderstood. And that's my goal is to the forty million Americans plus all the international friends that we have, that you are never alone again. Never. Yeah. You can We're always tune in to us. <laughs> okay, Michelle. All right, episode three. Um, <laughs> under our belt, Anxiety, the Positive Perspective Podcast with okay. Jennifer Thompson and Michelle Afford saying okay. adieu. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.